Okay, here's another example that again is a little bit different. Okay, so we are asked to solve this triangle, which means we want to find the unknown sides. It's not a 90 degree triangle, so I'm not allowed to use sine, cos, and tan, but I am allowed to use the sine rule since the sine rule applies to all uh, triangles, even 90 degree triangles, uh, would you know? Okay. And so the sine rule and the cosine rule. When do I use the sine rule? If I have an opposite pair. If I'm given an opposite pair in here, I can use the sine rule. When do I use this, the cosine rule? If I can't find an opposite pair. Okay, so if I can't find an opposite pair, then I'll use the cosine rule. Okay, well, let's see. For an opposite pair, we mean an angle and its opposite side. So let's go and look at it, uh, see what we have. We have one angle here. Do we have its opposite side? No. Do we have another angle? No, we don't have another angle. If we had another angle, we could find all three angles and then we could always. So if I have two angles, if I have two angles, I can always find the third angle. Okay, I can always find the, the other angle, and then I means I would definitely be able to use the sine rule. Okay, here I only have one angle, and if I have one angle and I don't have its opposite side length, I ha am going to have to use cosine rule. So I can't find the opposite angle, which means I'm going to use cosine rule. And cosine rule, you might recall, we said we need two sides, is two sides, and an inclusive angle. And then we can use this formula, b squared. Well, in this case, we're trying to calculate c. So we're going to take c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos of capital B. Okay, sorry, not capital B, capital C. Very important. The, ang the side I'm trying to calculate, I must have its opposite angle. Okay, obviously, it would be... Uh, the information that I have if, if I can't find an opposite pair. Okay, then this is indeed the information that I have. So what do we have? We have 10.77 as one side, 10,77 squared, remember this is squared, plus 11,18 squared minus 2 times 10.77 times 11.18 times cos of the angle which is 57.9 57.9 degrees let's calculate that remember this is for c squared for c we're still going to have to take the square root of that answer that i get so let's see we've got 10.77 squared no that's not at 10 point 77 squared plus 8 uh, 11.18 squared minus 2 times 10.77 times 11.18 times 57.9 cos. Okay, there we go. There's my whole expression equal to 11301531130. Comma zero comma five three etc. Okay, now we need to take the square root of that. So from this answer, I take the square root, and it's ten point sixty three. I get ten point sixty three. That is the length that I have here, ten comma sixty three. Now you see, the moment I did this, I actually calculate. I found myself an opposite pair. I've calculated an opposite pair and since I have my opposite pair now for all of the rest I am going to use my sine rule now again I only need to use the sine rule to calculate one other angle because the other one I can just find by sub subtracting these two from 180 so it doesn't matter which one let's go for B okay so we can say okay sine what are we trying to calculate we're trying to calculate an angle so make sure that sine of your angle is in the numerator if we were trying to uh, calculate a side length we would have said uh, like this we should have put would have done it like that okay it would just be simpler with the simplification okay so sine b is equal to sine we are using the c pairs Okay, sine of C over C, 
and when we substitute it's the angle we're looking for sine of B is equal to now I'm just multiplying the B on both sides so I'm just writing it out already so sine of B would be equal to sine of angle C which is 57.9 okay divided by side length C is what I calculated let's just make sure that I round off correctly yes 10.63 10.63 times B, the side length B is that 10.77. 10.77, and remember, this is what I get for sine of B. That's not the angle B, that's what I get for sine of B. Remember, sine will always be less than 1 and greater than negative 1. So it would be some fraction, so it won't even make sense as an angle. So we get 50, well, 57.9 sine of that divided by 10.63 is equal to that times 10.77 is equal to 0 0.858 blah 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 0 0.858 blah 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 so how do I calculate angle B okay now usually we used to solve these type of equations using um, the general uh, f um, solution but in these cases we can always just use arctan okay since the general solution uh, well maybe not always sometimes we have to if it's a uh, actually you know, I shouldn't have said that okay if if it's my angle is greater than 180 degrees with sine uh, sorry 90 degrees with sine I might have to then calculate um, uh, the alternate okay we might get a negative answer and we must then say okay well that that would be this angle there and then calculate that but let's look at a, some examples a little bit later on so uh, this would be arc sine of 0 0.858 blah 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 okay is equal to so what do we get we have to type, take arc sine so inverse sine of that 59.12 59 comma 1 uh, 2 and let's then find our last angle we have C our last angle a would be equal to hundred and eighty degrees minus a uh, or minus B minus C okay that would be my formula and what would I have there okay so for angle a I would have 57.9 and 59.12 minus 59.12 minus 57.9 equals okay 180 minus 59.12 minus 57.9 a little bit more than 62 62.98 degrees that is my final angle and I could do that because I've got my two other angles okay well I hope that helped and uh, next up let's see if we can find one of those uh, where one of my angles is actually more than 180 degrees. I'll see you around. See you there. Cheers.